There are two scenes in this film that are perfect metaphors for Robin Williams' career since around the Patch Adams time. You know what it's like to be 50 and people are already digging a hole to bury your career in? Okay. And... Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and my ongoing quest to review every single movie Robin Williams has ever made. Today I'm talking about one of my childhood favorites that... I'm not... well... <laughs> <laughs> it's RV, uh, the 2006 family comedy RV, directed by Barry Sonnenfeld, who directed Adam's Family, Adam's Family Values, the Entire Men in Black trilogy, and Nine Lives, the cat movie with Kevin Spacey. RV stars Robin Williams as Bob Monroe, a successful California beverage company executive whose job is threatened after one of his daughter's friends spills sludge on his boss at a birthday party and accuses him of driving health rates through the roof because the company that he works for is basically a toxic environment that makes toxic sludge, but they are on the verge of doing a big merger with this big company in Colorado, and Bob Monroe's mean boss, Will Arnett, tells him that he has to cancel the vacation he's planned to Hawaii with his family and meet him in Boulder, Colorado on Friday for a meeting. So instead of telling his family that he canceled the vacation, he buys an RV and tells them it's their new vacation. So the movie is really about Bob Monroe trying to reconnect with his family while also trying to save his job. RV also stars Cheryl Hines, Jojo, the singer, Josh Hutcherson, Kristen Chenoweth, Jeff Daniels, Will Arnett, Barry Sonnenfeld, the director, has a cameo not in the film, but he is on the side of the RV as Irv the salesman. Matthew Gray Googler has a cameo in this as well as one of the men helping Robin Williams flush the RV of shit. And Jeff Daniels, Kristen Chenoweth, and their three kids play this other family called the Gornickies that are like just RV regulars and they're a little kooky and weird and they're trying to befriend the Monroes, Robin Williams family, who is kind of an upper class California bougie white family who Watching this as an adult, I had a hard time feeling bad for it, but if you like MILF content, welcome. This is a great place for you to be. RV is a little messy. There's some of the scenes are still just as funny and hilarious as I remember them being, and a lot of them age really, really bad. So it's kind of a mixed bag, but let's get into it. So RV was shot in the Vancouver and Alberta areas for about three months in 2005. Jeff Daniels had actually owned an RV for years, and he showed up to set in his own RV. He also did all of his own banjo playing for the movie. Five RVs were purchased for the film to do the job of the big rolling turd, which is the name for the RV that the family is in. Two of them were assembled with special suspension hydraulics for the crazy driving scenes, and one of them was the drowned one that gets pulled out of the lake at the end of the movie. Chevy Chase, Tim Allen, and Tom Hanks were all considered for the role of Bob Monroe, which is funny because in Roger Ebert's review of this, he said that this is usually the type of film that stars Chevy Chase. In a bunch of different interviews for RV, Robin said that the movie never claimed to be anything but a good time and a little poop. In an interview he was doing at the time of The Night Listener, he said he did the RVs to pay the bills. This was around the range of a million dollar salary for him. But he did say that he signed up because the director, Barry Sonnenfeld, was funny and had great visual chops. He said they had a good time with good people making the film. He also said he was doing films like this because of Zelda and his other kids. Robin also compared the scene where he is covered in a geyser of fake shit to being slimed on Nickelodeon. He mentioned that he had been passing on family films recently and that he got the script for cheaper by the dozen and turned it down. He also was quoted as saying, wow, there's food, I'm on a studio movie because he'd been doing so much independent stuff before this. But like I said, RV is a very mixed bag. All the performances are pretty good. Honestly, I feel like I remember Robin's performance in this being a lot worse than it was. I also think that I thought of him more as a workaholic dad as a kid and less of somebody who just does an asshole move because he wants to save his job. So while the family dynamic is very accurate of a family who's been together for a while and has two angsty teenage children, I loved the four of them together. All their scenes together are pretty good. Jojo is very fun as the daughter. Josh Hutcherson's performance is a little cringe because it's very uh, he's like yo-yo gangsta beefy rap, but he's white and 12, so it's a little bit cringy. Jeff Daniels, Kristen Chenoweth are very fun and silly. You can tell that everybody just kind of had a good time making this, and that's always fun to see. I almost wish RV could have been a hard R, because 
there's a lot of cursing in this. There's like a lot of ass, damn, hell. Um, there's one bitch as well. Josh Hutcherson says that his sister is on the South Bitch Diet. And I remember when I saw this in theaters as a kid being like, wow, like, I'm hearing these words a lot. So if they had been able to say fuck. Robin Williams was mouthing fuck at one point too, like when he's holding on, he's like, and you can see it. I know you can see it. And like, if they had been able to have awkward RV sex and maybe like, have a little violence or just something crazy, I feel like this would have really been off the wall. But it's already full of rampant sex jokes and horniness and Kristen Chenoweth's bouncing boobs as she leans out of the window of the RV. I do have to quote my best friend, Scott Wilson, who was not available to shoot this review with me, but when I told him I had watched it said, send me pics of Kristen Chenoweth doing stuff with her tits. I will include a screenshot of that. We love, we do love MILFs here. But like everybody is really horny for Robin Williams' wife, Cheryl Hines, which yet another movie where he is paired with a woman 12 times hotter than he would ever actually pull. The movie is dated it's not as dated in its 2000s references as much as it's dated in its technology like the laptop and the scene where he writes his whole advertising proposal on a Blackberry and stands at the top to try to get service and a lot of the problems of course could have been solved with the modern technology and of cell phones and tracing and things like that but at one point there is a printed MapQuest list of grocery stores in between here at a certain place. There's also a PSP. Josh Hutcherson is playing with a PSP. It doesn't really that doesn't really take the movie down in any way. Oh my gosh, and when Josh Hutcherson says kinko that to mean copy that, God, so 2000s. The soundtrack of the movie is very much this guttural like which is like very stressful. At the beginning of the movie, this whole thing takes place because, I mean, they're walking around in their house, their kitchen is huge, it's nice, they're drinking martinis, both of the kids have their own rooms. Um, Robin obviously has this cushy job that he is in danger of losing, but he does still have this cushy job, cushy house, all these nice things, and when he tells his wife Cheryl Hines that they're going on an RV trip, she's upset because she wants a massage, and they take showers, and it's just very much like, okay, like, sorry, I don't really feel bad for these, like, upper-class, wealthy white people, like I did when I was a child. But a lot of the scenes that I thought were really funny when I was a child still hold up, like the scene at the beginning where Robin is struggling with the seatbelt for forever, the scene where everybody is singing in the car and overlapping and driving him crazy. The sh scene where the shit explodes is funny. It's really hard to watch and it's disgusting, but it is funny. The scene where the Gornickies are trying to chase them down because they have Robin Williams' laptop and they think they're just after them, that scene is hilarious still comedy gold. The scene where Robin Williams tries to go up the mountain and he gets the RV stuck on that hill and is like honking the horn trying to tip it. All those scenes are still very very funny. A lot of due in part to Robin playing this character more as a straight man who he's got a couple of jokes here and there you can obviously tell there's a few moments where he is improvising. There is one really really awful like minute and a half long scene and thank god it's just all white people but it's still really bad. These guys, these like gangsta dudes are playing basketball at a campsite. Josh Hutcherson tries to go up to them. They make a bunch of small jokes at him. Robin Williams goes up and talks to them in a very bad black scent for about a minute and a half straight, just uninterrupted. And that was easily the cringiest scene in the movie. Like worse than the shit guys are bar none. The tension between the wife and the GPS, the female GPS, is obviously not as funny as I remember being when I was a child either. There's a lot of obvious bad green and blue screen when they're driving. Jojo has a Keanu Reeves poster pinned up behind her on the couch. There's a couple of just like, you know, sort of racist or like sort of against women jokes, but it was 2006, you could get away with more than it. The jokes are still technically funny, they're just not jokes that would fly in today's culture, I guess. The smallest Gornicky child is one of the funniest actors in this movie. <laughs> he does so much with so little, and I don't even know if it was intentional or not, but there is a bong joke in this as well. They say that their child is named Moon, and Robin is like, oh, what about Rainbow or Bong, which is something that I also get. It starts to fall apart more towards the end, after about your ninth ridiculous chase scene down the highway, the ninth time the RV rolls away, and then you start to get into the same jokes being repeated over and over and then the five minutes of Robin Williams talks about how much his family means to him speech. So the last, like, the movie's only an hour 40 and it felt like it was 
a lot longer than it was by the time I got to the end of it, but it's one of those, like, it starts strong, it's got, a, it's got strong moments, and then by the time you get to the last half, it's just like, okay, like, let's wrap it up, let's be done. And it also starts to fall apart if you really let yourself think about, why didn't Robin Williams just say, hey, my job is really, really in jeopardy, and I have to do this thing. We need to move our Hawaii dates. So you just move your Hawaii dates, and the whole movie wouldn't happen. And I know that that's just the thing. By the time it gets to the very, very, very end, and they're driving away in the drowned RV and they get pulled over by this cop and Robin Williams starts going on a rant because he thinks he's getting pulled over for driving without chains when he's actually getting pulled over because these guys are chasing him down trying to offer him a job. But before he knows that, he starts another speech about something and it's just like, oh my god, like let the movie end. It's past its time. But then he opens a cabinet and a bunch of water falls on him and it gets like one last good gag in. The physical comedy in this movie is very fun. There are a lot of really fun moments that I still have a good time with. I still wholeheartedly enjoy this movie, partially because I loved it so, so much as a kid. But it's still a movie that's like, it's almost more geared towards adults. Like, you can definitely still have a good time watching this as an adult. I know my parents had a good time watching this when I was a kid with me. You can get past certain things. Obviously, it's not perfect, but it doesn't set out to be anything like that. Like Robin does say, it's pretty clear from the get-go what you're getting into. And... If it sounds like something you're gonna enjoy, it's honestly, it's a good, stupid time. There's just a lot of jokes that are kind of cringe, a lot of stuff may not age as well if you watch this as a kid. But the best part, obviously, is the very, very end, after the credits, where they all do Route 66, because you have Kristen Chenoweth within JoJo, you obviously have two singers in the cast, so you have to show off the vocals, but you also have Cheryl Hines and Robin Williams, who can't... Robin Williams can sing. He's not trying here. The only time in this movie that he really looks really miserable is at this very end where they're shooting this Route 66 thing, but it's it's very nostalgic for me, so I loved it a lot. And on the whole, it is what it is. You know, it's a, it's silly, it's not very good at all, but I just, I love it. I still do. RV grossed $87 million on a $50 million budget, so it didn't do poorly. The critics' reviews were kind of trending towards more negative, but I didn't see anything fully blast it and say that it was god-awful from start to finish. The Rotten Tomatoes critics' consensus says it's unoriginal and only occasionally funny, which is kind of true. Roger Ebert gave it two out of four stars and said there's nothing much I disliked but little to really recommend. RV won the Golden Raspberry Award in 2007 for Worst Excuse for Family Entertainment beating Deck the Halls, which is insane because Deck the Halls is just a nasty, horrible, unfunny movie. Kristen Chenoweth was nominated for Worst Supporting Actress alongside of her performances in Deck the Halls and Pink Panther and RV for this year. She lost to Carmen Electra in Date Movie and Scary Movie 4. Other than that, I feel like the people who grew up with this as a kid still hold on to this movie, but otherwise, it's just kind of one of those things. Like, it's out there. It's it's probably not going to come back around. Like, we're not going to have an rv assance in the next couple years or anything. But it's fun to revisit. It's Some of those moments that are still really funny do still really hold up. And it's just... It's just kind of a good time. So if you're interested in reliving that good time from your childhood, RV is available to watch anywhere with a Star subscription. You can also pay to rent it from Vudu, YouTube, Google, or Apple, or you can watch it on the beat up DVD you've had since the thing came out like I did. So if you didn't know, Robin Williams released six films in 2006. So 2006 is the year of the sixth. The first one was The Night Listener, RV was the second. Next week I will be looking at the third film, Robin's uncredited voice role in the animated film Everyone's Hero, which I remember really wanting to see as a kid when it came out and I never did. And the only reason I wanted to see it was because the scene of the baseball bouncing down the stairs going, my head, my butt, my head, my butt. So we'll see if it's good. Uh, I don't have high hopes, but you know what? It's probably better than getting covered covered in a, in a geyser of Nickelodeon slime shit, so I'll take it. Um, and until next time, watch out for the big old rolling turd coming through, coming through!